Okay, so double negation uh, is one of our new equivalency rules. And so this will deal with, first, uh, this will deal with 8.2. So this is all 8.2, the five newest equivalency rules. So starting with double negation and going on through contraposition. So double negation is the first of our equivalency rules. And basically what an equivalency rule, as its name suggests, means something is logically equivalent to something else. So that's basically the definition, but it's a lot easier showed than explained. So with our first rule, double negation. Essentially, the basic rule for double negation says that something that is tilted twice is equal to an untilted thing, right? That sounds kind of confusing, but basically, imagine P stands for, right, um, Pittsburgh's, Pittsburgh will win the Super Bowl, right? Pittsburgh will win the Super Bowl is equal to Pittsburgh won't not win the Super Bowl, right? That's the, Those two things are logically equivalent. This is the negation of a negation of P. So these two things are equal. So anytime you see P, you could put on two tildes, and anytime you see uh, P with two tildes in front of it, you could turn it into a statement letter with no tildes at all. So that's the cool thing about uh, the equivalency rules. These two things are equal. So what does that actually mean? Let's see it in a proof. So looking at my proof right here, okay, I say, hmm, what can I do? Well, I want tilde Q, but how to get it, right? Well, I don't know any other ways right now. Maybe I can do something with double negation. This looks promising right here. I almost have a match for modus tollens. Let me try tilde, tilde, B. Right, well, now look at that from line one, double negation, dn. I've got an, a match here for modus tollens. This is one of the most frequently matched uh, instances for modus tollens. When you have a tilde on your consequent on the right side there, and you have two tildes somewhere else on a separate line, now we're allowed to do modus tollens on that right there, and that gets us tilde q. 2, 3MT. The reason why I show you that's a little bit confusing, that match right there, but that is going to come up quite a bit. There's other things we can do with contraposition to avoid that, but that's a good lesson to learn. So if you need to watch that one twice, go ahead. But that's a match for modus tollens right there that you're going to see a lot. So that's double negation. Our next rule from 8.2 is commutation. This one's so obvious that you already know it. Commutation says that P and Q is equal to Q and P, right? Same thing with the wedges, right? P or Q is equal to Q or P, right? It, it doesn't matter, right? You're just flipping the order with commutation. Only, though, for a dot and a wedge. Don't go trying to, you know, mix up the signs and do this for an arrow or something like that. This only works for these two rules. So flipping a conjunction around or flipping a wedge around. These two things are logically equivalent, and these two things are logically equivalent. Now, that obviously, there's no equal sign, right? So that is not equal to that. So don't get that mixed up. There's just the fact that commutation applies with both the signs of the dot and the wedge. So let's see what this looks like in a proof. Right? Well, I know that I've got a conditional conclusion, so you might be thinking CP if you've gotten there yet, but we haven't gotten there yet, so let's maybe see if there's another way. Well, looking at this pattern, I see that I've got a pretty close match for HS, right? But not quite. This is mixed up. I've got F and R and R and F. So I need to fix that. Now, the cool thing about the equivalency rules is that you can go into a line and just mess with part of it. You couldn't do that before, but since F and R is equal to R and F, we can go in and just mess with a piece of the line and leave the other part of the line completely untouched. So I'm going to remake line one, essentially, leaving the part of the line that doesn't apply to my rule completely untouched, and now switching around the part that I can, which is that part right there. Right? I switched it around right here and left the A completely alone. So that was just one com. Now that I've got my match, I can do... Right? I've got RF, RF, that means I can do hypothetical syllogism, like I learned before from 8.1, to change 
that to that, right? There's that match. The right side of this arrow is the left side of that arrow, so I cut out the middleman and make a new one. 2, 3, H, S. Commutations, fairly useful, but it, it doesn't come up too much. So moving right along, association. Association is the easiest way to see it is it's essentially just sliding parentheses over. So when you have wedge, wedge, and three statement letters, you can just slide the parentheses over a letter. See, we just jumped it over a letter and changed it to this, all right, P or Q. So it's basically just putting the parentheses right here, right, and getting rid of that one. So we just slid our parentheses in here. We just, to make it look like this, we just slid them, slid them to the left. To make this look like that, we just slid them to the right. And the same thing works for the dot, right? You can slide your parentheses to the left or the right. As long as you have a match, it's got to all be dots or all be wedges, right? Then you can slide it around. This is association. So let's see what that looks like in a proof. Well, I see that I've got a match for association. Again, you don't always know how it's going to wind up, but you know you see you've got that match. So let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and try it out. Slide the parentheses to the right, and I can get E wedge R wedge F. See, I just slid the parentheses around to AS. Well, now I've got a match for DS, right? Lines one and three. So that and that, right? Cancel out. And let me have, I can get rid of the parentheses, R wedge F. Lines 1, 3, D, S. So I'm done now, right? I've got the conclusion? Not quite. Remember, it's got to look exactly like the conclusion. So what rule allows me to switch these, the order of these two? Right? It's the one we just did. Commutation F, R. Line 4, com. Association is pretty straightforward. It doesn't come up too often, but again, just like with all the equivalency rules, it's something that when it does come up, it's really, really useful now. Here's a rule that does come up all the time and is very, very important. De Morgan's Law. De Morgan's Law allows us to change negations right into conjuncts and this negation into a disjunction depending on what symbol's in the parentheses. So take some time to really look at this and see what's happening. I like to think of it about, it's all about moving the tilde, right? When I have this pattern, I think about changing it, right? I apply the tilde to both of the things inside the parentheses and flip the sign. So it was a wedge, I make it a dot. De Morgan's is always gonna change the sign. If you're working with a dot, you're gonna make it a wedge. If you're working with a wedge, you're gonna make it a dot. And you're always gonna either end up with two tildes or one tilde, depending on what you start with. So if you have two tildes and a wedge, then you're gonna have one tilde and a dot, right? If you have one tilde and a wedge, now we have two tildes and a dot. See, we flip the signs and change the number of parentheses, uh, tildes, right? Same thing down here. If you have this pattern, then you can switch it to that. If you have that pattern, right, you can switch it to that, just depending on what you want to do. These are logically equivalent. You can go back and forth, right? Let's see that in practice. So, I'm looking there. Anytime you see a tilde in parentheses, you should probably be thinking, wait, I might have a match for De Morgan's. In this case, I do, right? I have that match right there. So I know that I can change it to something that looks like that. So I can put the tilde on both letters and change the sign from a wedge to a dot. One De Morgan's, right? So moving along, okay, well I can do simplification, right? I could do tilde B if I wanted to, but I can already see where I'm going to go with this. So that's just three simp and look at that I've got my match through modus tollens 2 4 and T. De Morgan's is going to come up a lot a lot a lot so definitely spend some time reviewing it. Finally our last rule contraposition. Contraposition is pretty straightforward it's just flipping and conditional right so if you have a conditional you can flip the order and change the tildes or, and, and negate each side. So this is just that flipped with tildes. Conversely, if you have two tildes in a conditional, then you can take both of them away 
and put it like that. Remember, you can go this way or that way with these rules. So in this case, I'm looking at this line. Right? I need tilde G. Well, I see a match right off the start. Don't, because of our new rules, don't forget about the basics, right? There's this clear match for MP right there. Mm -hmm. So that's 2, 3, MP. Now, I could, if I wanted to, use MT to get tilde G, but I could also, right, just to illustrate this rule, I could switch it around and go tilde B, arrow, tilde G, line 1, contraposition, right? And now I've got another match for modus ponens, tilde G, 4, 5. M P, right? Contraposition is going to come up. All these equivalency rules are going to come up. Some of them more than others, but it's really, really important that you do the practice problems so you can see the patterns. That's the biggest thing. You're not going to be able to do these until you really understand the rules. So if you have to watch the video, watch the video again. But until you do practice problems, you'll never really be able to get it. So please, please, please use the web tutor, and uh, hopefully this is a good foundation for you to get started.